most hated GTA characters. Number one, Dmitry Raskolov, the king of betrayal. Let's kick things off with a real piece of work. Dmitry Raskolov from GTA 4. If there was a Betrayal Olympics, this guy would take gold, silver, and bronze. Dmitry is introduced as a friend and partner of Mikhail Faustine, and at first he seems like a reasonable guy. But oh boy, does that change quickly. This snake in the grass betrays our protagonist, Nico Belich, not once, not twice, but multiple times throughout the game. First, he convinces Nico to kill Faustine, promising a fresh start. But instead of keeping his word, he teams up with Ray Bulgarin, Nico's old enemy, and tries to kill our boy. And that's just the beginning. He goes on to burn down Roman's apartment and kidnap Roman. What makes Dimitri so hateable isn't just his actions, but his personality. He's manipulative, treacherous, and always looking out for number one. He's the kind of guy who'd sell his own mother if he thought it would benefit him. The worst part? He doesn't even have the decency to be upfront about his betrayals. He's always got an excuse, always trying to play the victim. Oh, it's just business, Nico. Yeah, right. The business of being a total scumbag, maybe. For a two, Steve Haynes, corrupt cop extraordinaire. Next up on our hit list is Steve Haynes from GTA 5. If you ever wanted to see what would happen if you gave a badge and a gun to a narcissistic sociopath, well, Meet Steve Haynes. Haynes is an FIB agent, which in the GTA universe is basically the FBI. But don't let that fool you into thinking he's one of the good guys. This dude is corrupt to the core, and he's not even subtle about it. Throughout GTA 5, Haynes constantly manipulates and threatens our protagonists, forcing them to do his dirty work. Need someone assassinated? Call Franklin. Want to raid the offices of a rival agency? That's a job for Michael. And all the while, He's got this smug, self-satisfied grin on his face. What really makes Haynes unlikable is his arrogance. He genuinely believes he's above the law, that he can do whatever he wants without consequences. And let's not forget his media ambitions. This guy is so in love with himself that he hosts his own TV show about being a federal agent. Talk about a conflict of interest. But perhaps the most infuriating thing about Haynes is how he treats the protagonists. He sees them as nothing more than tools to be used and discarded. He'll threaten their families, their friends, anything to get what he wants. And when things go south, he's more than happy to frame them and leave them out to dry. Devin Weston, the billionaire bully. Speaking of entitled jerks, let's talk about Devin Weston, another gem from GTA 5. If Steve Haynes represents corrupt law enforcement, Devin Weston is the poster child for corrupt big business. Weston is a billionaire investor, which in GTA terms means he's a guy who makes money by screwing over everyone else. He's introduced as a potential employer for the protagonists, but it quickly becomes clear that he's just using them for his own gain. What makes Weston particularly hateable is his smug, condescending demeanor. He treats everyone around him like they're beneath him. He's the kind of guy who probably thinks the world owes him everything just because he's rich. Throughout the game, Weston exploits and betrays the main characters multiple times. He refuses to pay Franklin, Michael, and Trevor for their work, tries to have Michael's movie shut down out of spite, and even sends mercenaries after Michael's family. But the cherry on top of this Sunday of awfulness? When things don't go his way, he throws a tantrum like a spoiled child. He can't stand the idea that someone might get the better of him. It's almost satisfying to watch. Almost. Hash 4. Vlad Glebov the sleazeball. Let's take a trip back to GTA 4 and talk about Vlad Glebov. If you're looking for a masterclass in how to be a despicable human being, Vlad's your guy. Vlad is a low-level Russian criminal in Liberty City, and from the moment you meet him, you know he's bad news. He's the kind of guy who thinks he's a big shot, but is really just a small-time crook with delusions of grandeur. What makes Vlad so unlikable? Well, for starters, he's a complete sleazeball. He mistreats everyone around him, including his own girlfriend. He's always trying to intimidate people, including our boy Nico, even though he's about as threatening as a wet paper bag. But the real kicker? This scumbag has the audacity to have an affair with Mallory, the girlfriend of Nico's cousin Roman. In the world of GTA, that's a big no-no. It's not just disrespectful to Roman, it's a direct insult to Nico as well. Vlad's constant posturing, his sleazy behavior, and his disrespect for others make him one of the most punchable characters in GTA history. And let's be honest, 
when Nico finally deals with him, it's pretty satisfying. Hash 5. Dardan Petrella, the Lone Shark. Sticking with GTA 4, let's talk about Dardan Petrella. Now, Dardan might not be as well known as some of the other characters on this list, but he certainly leaves an impression. Dardan is an Albanian loan shark, and he's the first major antagonist player's encounter in GTA 4. He's introduced as the guy who's been terrorizing Roman Bellic, Nico's cousin, over gambling debts. What makes Dardan so hateable? Well, for one, he's a bully. He uses violence and intimidation to get what he wants, beating up Roman and threatening his life. He's the kind of guy who preys on the vulnerable, exploiting people's weaknesses for his own gain. But what really cements Darden's place on this list is the fact that he messes with family. In the GTA universe, family is important, and by threatening Roman, Darden automatically puts himself in Nico's crosshairs. While Darden might not have the screen time of some of our other entries, he sets the tone for the kinds of enemies Nico will face throughout GTA 4. He's a street-level thug who thinks he's untouchable, and watching Nico prove him wrong is one of the game's early satisfying moments. Hash 6. Jimmy DeSanta, the entitled brat. Switching gears a bit, let's talk about Jimmy DeSanta from GTA 5. Now, Jimmy isn't a criminal mastermind or a corrupt official. No, Jimmy is something far worse, a spoiled, entitled brat. Jimmy is Michael's son, and from the moment we meet him, it's clear that he's the result of too much money and not enough discipline. He's lazy, disrespectful, and has a massive sense of entitlement. What makes Jimmy so unlikable? Well, for starters, he's constantly causing problems for his family and the other protagonists. He's the kind of kid who thinks the world owes him everything, but he's not willing to work for anything. One of Jimmy's worst moments? He drugs his own father and steals his car. And when he's caught, he acts like he's the victim. It's this lack of accountability that really grinds players' gears. But perhaps the most annoying thing about Jimmy is his attitude. He's constantly insulting everyone around him, using slang he clearly doesn't understand, and trying to act like he's some kind of gangster when he's really just a privileged kid from the hills. He's not unintelligent, and there are moments where you can see he could be a decent person. But his laziness and entitlement always get in the way, making him one of the most frustrating characters to deal with in GTA 5. Hash 7. Simeon Yatarian, the scammer. Simeon is a car dealer, but calling him that is like calling a great white shark a fish, technically true, but it doesn't quite capture the danger. Simeon runs a luxury car dealership that's actually a front for a predatory loan scheme. He sells cars to people who can't afford them, then repossesses them when they inevitably default on the payments. It's a scam, plain and simple, and Simeon has no qualms about ruining people's lives to make a buck. What makes Simeon particularly unlikable is how he treats Franklin. Franklin works for Simeon at the start of the game, and Simeon constantly belittles and exploits him. He sees Franklin as nothing more than a tool to be used in his schemes. But it's not just his treatment of Franklin that makes Simeon hateable. It's his whole demeanor. He's always got this fake, oily charm that just makes your skin crawl. He acts like he's doing people a favor while he's actually screwing them over. And let's not forget his racism. Simeon often makes disparaging remarks about various ethnic groups, all while claiming to be a victim of racism himself. It's the kind of hypocrisy that really gets under your skin. Next, Rocco, a character who appears in both GTA 4, The Ballad of Gay Tony, and GTA 5. Rocco is the kind of guy who watched Goodfellas one too many times and thought, yeah, I could do that. Rocco is a made man in the Ancelotti crime family, but don't let that fool you into thinking he's some kind of criminal mastermind. Nah, Rocco is more like the yappy chihuahua of the mob world. All bark and no bite, but annoying as hell. In The Ballad of Gay Tony, Rocco is a constant thorn in Luis Lopez's side. He's always trying to assert his dominance, despite being about as intimidating as a wet noodle. He forces Luis into dangerous situations, threatens Gay Tony, and generally acts like he owns the place. But Rocco's not content with just being hated in one game. Oh no. He had to show up in GTA 5 too, where he causes problems for Michael DeSanta. By this point, Rocco's moved to Los Santos and is trying to make it in the movie business. Spoiler alert. He's just as insufferable in Hollywood as he was in Liberty City. What makes Rocco so hateable? It's his arrogance, plain and simple. He's got a massive ego and absolutely nothing to back it up. He's abusive to those he sees as beneath him and sucks up to anyone with more power. In short, Rocco Pelosi is every bad boss you've ever had, 
turned up to 11 and given a bad Italian accent. Next up, we've got Catalina, who appears in both GTA 3 and GTA, San Andreas. If you've ever had an ex that made you think, maybe being single forever isn't so bad, multiply that feeling by about a thousand, and you've got Catalina. Catalina is introduced in San Andreas as CJ's girlfriend, and from the get-go, it's clear that she's a few fries short of a Happy Meal. She's aggressive, violent, and has mood swings that would give a roller coaster a run for its money. But it's in GTA 3 where Catalina really cements her place as one of the most hated characters in the series. She betrays Claude, the protagonist, during a bank heist, shoots him, and leaves him for dead. And that's just in the opening cutscene. What makes Catalina so unlikable? Well, where do we start? She's psychotic, unpredictable, and seems to enjoy causing pain and chaos. She treats relationships like a game where the goal is to see how much she can manipulate and abuse her partner. But perhaps the most frustrating thing about Catalina is her lack of clear motivation. Most villains, you can at least understand why they do what they do, even if you don't agree with it. With Catalina, it often feels like she's causing mayhem just for the hell of it. In a series full of criminals and lowlifes, Catalina stands out as particularly unhinged. She's the embodiment of crazy ex stereotypes turned up to 11, and players breathe a sigh of relief every time she exits the screen. 10. Officer Frank Tenpenny, Corruption with a Badge. Now, let's talk about a character who gives new meaning to the phrase bad cop. Officer Frank Tenpenny from GTA San Andreas. If you ever wanted to see what would happen if Denzel Washington's character from Training Day was somehow even more corrupt, well, meet Frank Tenpenny. Tenpenny is a police officer, but calling him that is like calling the Titanic a small boating accident. This guy is corrupt to his core, using his badge as a license to do whatever the hell he wants. Throughout San Andreas, Tenpenny constantly harasses and blackmails CJ, forcing him to do his dirty work. Need someone killed? Call CJ. Want to frame a rival officer? CJ's your guy. All the while, Tenpenny's got this smug, self-satisfied attitude that just makes you want to reach through the screen and slap him. What makes Tenpenny particularly hateable is his hypocrisy. He claims to be cleaning up the streets, but he's responsible for much of the gang violence in Los Santos. He preaches about law and order while breaking every law in the book. But perhaps the most infuriating thing about Tenpenny is how long he seems to get away with it. He's like a cockroach in a cop uniform, surviving everything CJ throws at him. It makes his eventual downfall all the more satisfying, but man, does he make you work for it. Switching gears a bit, let's talk about Brucey Kibbutz from GTA 4. Now, Brucey is a bit of a special case. Some players find him entertaining, but for many, he's like that guy at the gym who just won't shut up about his protein shakes, amusing for about five seconds, then increasingly annoying. Brucey is introduced as Roman's friend and the owner of an auto shop. From the moment you meet him, it's clear that subtlety is not in this guy's vocabulary. He's loud, he's brash, and he's got more testosterone than sense. What makes Brucey so grating? Well, for starters, his personality is turned up to 11 at all times. Everything is awesome, or epic, or genetically different, bro. It's exhausting just being around him. Then there's his obsession with masculinity. Brucey is constantly trying to prove how manly he is, whether it's through his workout regime, his steroid use, or his attempts at womanizing. It's like he's a walking, talking embodiment of toxic masculinity. But what really pushes Brucey into most hated territory for many players is how he treats Nico. He's constantly pushing Nico into dangerous situations, all in the name of proving how alpha they both are. And when things go wrong, Brucey's nowhere to be found. While Brucey might not be as evil as some of the other characters on this list, his over-the-top personality and constant need for validation make him one of the most annoying characters to deal with in the GTA universe. Next up, we've got Martin Madrazo from GTA 5. At first glance, Madrazo might seem like just another wealthy Los Santos resident. But scratch the surface, and you'll find a ruthless drug lord who makes Pablo Escobar look like a boy scout. Madrazo is introduced when Michael DeSanta accidentally pulls his house down a hill, as you do. From that point on, Madrazo becomes a constant presence in the lives of our protagonists, forcing them into increasingly dangerous situations to pay off their debt. What makes Madrazo so unlikable? Well, for starters, there's his violent temper. This guy goes from zero to homicidal in about three seconds flat. 
He's the kind of person who'd order a hit on you for looking at him funny. Then there's his manipulative nature. Madrazo is always playing angles, always looking for ways to use people for his own gain. He treats the protagonists like pawns in his game, sending them on life-threatening missions like he's ordering takeout. Let's talk about Ray Bulgarin. If there was an award for most persistent antagonist, Bulgarin would win it hands down. This guy is like gum on your shoe. No matter how hard you try to shake him, he just keeps coming back. Bulgarin is a Russian mobster with a grudge against Nico Bellic. Why? Because Nico used to work for him, and things didn't end well. From the moment Bulgarin reappears in Nico's life, it's clear that he's not there to let bygones be bygones. What makes Bulgarin so hateable? Well, for starters, there's his involvement in human trafficking. If there's a line that even GTA criminals don't cross, that's probably it. Bulgarin doesn't just cross that line, he obliterates it. Then, there's his relentless pursuit of Nico. This guy just doesn't know when to quit. He tries to kill Nico multiple times throughout the game, each attempt more elaborate than the last. It's like he's auditioning for a Bond villain role and Nico's the unwilling Daniel Craig. All of this, the murder attempts, the threats, the chaos he causes, is because of a grudge. He's willing to burn down half of Liberty City just to get back at Nico. Talk about not being able to let things go. Last, but certainly not least, we've got Billy Gray from GTA 4, The Lost and Damned. If you ever wanted to see what would happen if you gave a rabid wolverine a motorcycle and a gang, well, meet Billy Gray. Billy is the president of The Lost MC, a motorcycle club that protagonist Johnny Klebitz is a part of. From the moment Billy is introduced, it's clear that he's bad news. He's unstable, prone to violence, and has about as much loyalty as a cat in a room full of laser pointers. This guy is supposed to be the leader, the one holding the club together. Instead, he's the one tearing it apart from the inside. Then, there's his drug use. Now look, this is GTA. Drug use isn't exactly uncommon, but Billy takes it to a whole new level, becoming increasingly erratic and dangerous as the game progresses. He's like a walking, talking anti-drug PSA. Despite Johnny's loyalty, Billy constantly undermines him, puts him in danger, and generally treats him like dirt. It's the kind of behavior that makes you want to reach through the screen and give Billy a taste of his own medicine. Now, you tell me which GTA character do you hate the most? Is it Catalina or someone else? Subscribe to the channel and let me know in the comments. I'll see you next time till then, take care and have a nice day.